Chris Watkin back again with Nigel Risner. Talk to me about the difference between leadership and management in a, in a state letting agency and what the difference is and why the bosses should be, be wary of it to, to, to be more successful. Talk to me. So it's a really interesting question because if I said to you in a really easy way, we lead people and we manage things. That sounds really easy. That's it. Next question. I mean, because that's <laughs> it in a way. You lead people, but you manage things. So you can't manage people. You can just lead them to where they go. And you can't lead toilets and facilities. You can just manage them. So if you have people and you try and manage their expectations, you're going to really fall short. And that's why too many owners or when they get promoted from being a senior letting, um, they've, they've joined the company, they're 11 when they join, and now they're 14, they now have got two years experience, and we make them a manager. Well, they don't know what they're managing. What they've got to do is lead the people through experience and the way the company works. So I'm telling you now, drop this word manager. It doesn't work. You either have people you can lead, or you have things that you can manage. So you can manage a portfolio, try and lead a portfolio and see if it cares. It's got no self-esteem. So you've got a 20, got 20 letting property portfolio. Try and lead it. It doesn't care if you're late delivering a property, but people matter, which is why it's about leadership. Often I see these cartoons where the, 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 there's a cartoon of a manager cracking the whip and then the leader the, is where basically you're working for your team. Is that a good analogy? Well, forget the word manager. Just, just, just drop this word manager. You, so you, the, you don't manage anything, you just... No, no, you manage things. Manage things, systems. Yeah, so a facilities manager is a classic example. So I do, I've, I've done a lot of work with facility management companies all over the world. And what they do is they manage properties, they manage facilities, they manage reception, they manage the process. But it's the people who lead the organisation to deliver those things. Why do so many people get it wrong? Because they think the people are a process. They've forgotten that what we do is we employ, I, you've brought me in, and imagine you've entered, this is what I'd like you to say. So you've, you've brought me in to share some ideas, but what you really don't want is my ideas, you want me to share your agenda. Well, that, that doesn't work. Because the reason you've interviewed, you've spent three months trying to find the ideal person to add value to your group, is because they've got something different to what you've got. Otherwise, why are you employing them? And then the minute they come and you want to manage their expectations, you want to manage their thought process, well, you can't. And if I don't want to talk about the great resignation, but I will in this respect, that the reason people leave companies is because they're leaving their managers, not the company. It's interesting you said earlier on is that someone someone gets two years experience as a as a good negotiator and I, I don't know if it's true in other industries but what you tend to find is if you're a good negotiator you tend to get upgrade uh, promoted to being a, a valuer and if you're a good valuer you tend to get promoted to be a manager or whatever the title is well let, let me just stop you i'll use me as the example so my background and you may not have any idea my background is commercial finance my original partner was a nursing and home residential estate agent that was one of the largest in the country selling nursing homes, residential homes. I didn't want to work for him, so we set up a separate finance company. So I'd been arranging finance, and we did millions. And then I got busy, and I had a secretary, and I needed some more people. I was terrible at managing these people. I had no leadership experience. I had no idea what their expectations were. And I employed a guy, and this is a true story, and he worked for a bank and he was on good money and I promised him some great stuff and I promised him a new car when he joined us. Just at that time, my insurance director had a Golf GTI and he wanted a BMW. I said, brilliant, I'll give that Golf GTI, which is a much better car that I was gonna offer the new guy. And he joined and I said, David, I've got a Golf GTI for you, it's only a year old. And I watched his face literally drop. Because behind the scenes, he's probably told his family, I'm getting a brand new company car. It's a red Ford Sierra GL Gear X, whatever. You remember those cars? Gear X, you know. And then I've told him, no, you've got a Golf GTI. And he left in about four months to another company, strange enough, in competition with us. And it's because I had no idea how to lead this person. 
So going back another step, I'm not the right person to employ people because my experience of employing people is not great. I could do a job. I could be a letting agent tomorrow, okay, because I've got lots of energy, I communicate well, and I'm passionate. But I'd be awful at managing and leading a team because I'm not a very good leader. I know we're going to deal with animals later, but I'm just going to share one animal for you, which is not in my book. Do you know the difference between a lion and a leopard? In what, in real life? In real life, yeah. Well, one has spots. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that, and that's what most people think is the major difference. One's bigger than the other? Yeah. Uh, are they on different continents? No, even, even, even continents, but that's okay. Okay then, go on. Okay, so lions work in a pack. They share the spoils of their food. They communicate really well and they hunt brilliantly together. Leopards don't do any of that. So you have a sole leopard who's a brilliant negotiator and then he's done a really good job and we make him a manager of five other people. He doesn't want to share his experience. He doesn't want to share his ideas. He's a sole negotiator. He's going to work on his own on an exclusive area. Maybe he's got some weird clients. He's a portfolio manager. He's got 20 of his own clients. He doesn't want to join in, but we make him a leader. We make him a manager. So you've got to recognise the people in your team, do you know their skills, do you know their strengths, but can you lead them? Can you teach someone how to be a leader? Well, you can share some concepts and then see whether they're willing to share ideas because there are some people who much prefer to do the job themselves. So you and I, we're very happy, because I've, and we've known each other a bit of time, we're very happy if people want to help us and support the cameras and make us tea and whatever. But there are some people who do it all themselves and they wouldn't trust the camera work. We've had three different people come into this room to make sure the sound's right, the cameras are right, the letters are right, whatever. There are some people who would not trust anybody to do that because they want to do it themselves, because nobody can do it like Chris and Nigel. I mean, there's a lot of estate agents, especially letting agents, who are really awful at delegating. Yes, because they ran their small little business. There was them and their wife or a secretary or a husband. They started. Then all of a sudden, they got 30 properties. So they needed a number, a number two. I'll deal with this. You just handle some of the phone calls. You handle some of the boards. You handle. And at some point, they have to let go. A delegation is not about delegation. We'll change the word delegation to trust. So I'm going to be really open here. I trust you 100% until you let me down. So I have no idea the questions you're asking. I have no idea how this is going to go out. I just trust you that you're going to make both of us, well, you're not, you can't make me look that good, uh, well, a bit of makeup, but, but there's not much you can do with this. But I'm going to trust that you're going to make this show the best it can be. But there'll be other people who will sit here I'd like to see before it goes out. I want to see how it's going to look. I'd like to see the questions in advance. Because mm. they have trust issues, not delegation issues. Does that make sense? So drop the word delegation. It's a bit like drop the word manager in organisations. They're leaders. Drop the word delegation and then say trust. Do you think estate agents and letting agents could be better by promoting people who are not necessarily, you know, a, a good value? It doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be a good manager. I'm, I'm telling you now, 90% of people who are promoted are not ready for promotion. They're good at what they do, and now you're what you're asking to. I mean, use me as an example. So we're going to do this interview, and I'm on this side of the camera 95% of the time. So you'd think I'd know how to operate any of these cameras, and we've got eight cameras, and we've got lights. I'm telling you now, I'd be the worst at this, but I've been doing this for 25 years. This is not my speciality. You and me talking, you and me in front of an audience of 20, 50, 100. I've done 6,000 people. But if you put me behind the camera, you'd have a terrible show. That's not my skill set. But what happens is you've got a letting agent or an estate agent who's been there two years, he's produced some really good results, and now we think, well, maybe he can teach other people. Maybe they can't. And then what happens is they lose some motivation, they get annoyed with some of their junior people because they've got a trust. And worse is they can't have that instant rapport with some of their own clients because their job is to teach other people. So now you've got a disillusioned leader You've got five people who aren't being trained properly. And now you've got the owner thinking, well, I wonder why the figures aren't as good. That's because you've promoted somebody without giving them leadership training, without giving them leadership qualities. And do they even want to be a leader? So do you know much about Facebook? A little bit, yeah, I'm on it. Okay, so let me share a secret about Facebook. If you were in a team, if you get promoted to be a leader, you don't get a pay rise. You're choosing to be a leader. 
you could also choose not to be a leader to be a sole contributor to Facebook. Does that make sense? Yes. So just because you and I do a fantastic job here and we go, well, we're going to make you a leader, what we then think is, well, it must be a pay rise. See, look at your face here. You see, what we're saying is, we've given you the title, obviously you're going to get a pay rise. Yeah, but I, I'm telling you now, I prefer to continue doing my own little job. And if I do a phenomenal job, I'd like a pay rise too. Just because you're promoting me, why do I need to get a pay rise? Well, you assume that, don't you? Well, but that's the point. But am I qualified? And am I going to have the same freedom? Am I going to earn the same commission? So are you saying to people that... In, you know that probably people who are not qualified or, or have the sufficient skills to be promoted you should almost ask them would you like to be promoted but without a, without a without a, a pay rise and see what their answer is yeah because what you're then saying is oh yeah of course I'd, if I get five thousand pounds more I'd love to be a leader yeah but are you any good at it and, what, are we, are we, and then are we setting them up for failure I promise you now you and I running a team of estate agents would not be great for the industry you and I working with the industry would be phenomenal. Does that make sense? Mm. But, but how much knowledge, how long have you been doing a bit of estate agency work, writing articles, training people? How many weeks? Um, nine years. Nine years. Okay, and I've done it for 25. So between us, we've got 34 years, and we'd be not the greatest leaders, but we'd be great working with people and sharing ideas, which is what we do. And we give lots of stuff away. But are we saying we're only going to do it if you give us X amount of money, and then we could be better? Based on what? Do you run this studio? No. Good. Because you're not the best manager to run this studio. Do you lead some of the people in the studio? No, it's a, it's a completely separate firm. Okay. But you've got these people and you yes, use them. Yes, but I have a team around me. Well, yes, because you're not the greatest leader. You might be a phenomenal speaker. You might be a great presenter. You may not be the best leader. Wait, this is interesting because I, I employ a, a VA in South Africa and, you know, she's been with me now for over a year and it's taken me, because it's the first time I've properly managed someone for about 10 years. <laughs> led them. Uh, led them, sorry. And it's, I've had to teach myself that... <laughs> You have to follow up. You have to guide and support them. Because you, you, sometimes you just say, "Get this done," and it, and you assume it's done, don't you? What? Because because of what the personality types we are. Well, because that's what we do. Yeah. And, and there's the problem in leadership. So you use that as an example. You've got an estate agent. You've got a letting agent. We've taken on a brand new property, and we say to Bob or Sally, "I tell you what, we'd like you to do. We'd like you to market this." But you haven't given them the No, no, hold on. Yeah. We'd like you to market it. And then we go off. We play golf. And we're now doing our stuff because we're leading the team. And we're going to delegate to our people. So we've delegated. And then we come, and then three weeks later, we get a phone call from the vendor or an applicant. Uh, not much happening. We go, oh, I'll speak to Bob. And I gave them all the details. And this young lad or young lass goes, yeah, but I, I, I put it on, um, um, I can't think one of the poor Right move. I put it on right move. Because that's what you do. And they go, well, what have you done since then? And we haven't spoken to the vendor. We haven't spoken to the applicant. We haven't chased out. We haven't spoken to the local authorities. We don't know about the local school. We don't know any of this stuff. And then we get angry with them. So now you've now literally shat on them from a height. So you've knocked some of their confidence. Then you give them another property. And the first thing they do when you get another property is they now can't, they don't put on right move. We better get this right now. But I'll wait till you come back to the office. We can ask a few more questions. But I'm nervous. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden now, six weeks has gone by, seven weeks has gone by, you're now no longer talking to me, you're now speaking to one of the other people who's had a couple of great results, and I feel like you don't love me. And let me share about this word love. Your job is to love me while we're doing this interview. Not to like me, you don't have to like me, your job is to love me and for us to get on. And it is to trust me. So now let's think of some new words for state agents and letting agents. Do you love your team? And do you trust your team? You don't have to like them. So I don't know you that well. So I don't ever like you. But I love you because I know you're professional. And I trust you because I think you're going to deliver a phenomenal product. I don't need to like you, though. I don't need to invite you to my house for a barbecue. That comes in time. But the word love means a deep affection for. So I need to make sure we're on the same page. Thank you for your time today, Nigel. Thank you.